So, you want to make a landscape. Well, step one, become God. Step two, you're welcome. Hey guys, welcome back to Touch by Kai. I'm Kai, and today we are back once again taking a look at how to create a landscape and a little bit of material. It's first things first, we're going to go up to edit and go to preferences. Go ahead and go to the add-ons tab and make sure you search up landscape and you'll get the ant landscape. You can no longer type A and T because now they put dots in between it. I don't know why, so it doesn't come up like that because there's dot, 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 like ant farm. Um, anyway, we're going to go ahead and just save that real quick. Uh, make sure that's checked on and then we just hit save. Cool. Now. Uh, I'm going to split my window into two by dragging from the top hand, left hand corner, or the right hand, or the bottom, or whatever, until our cur uh, cursor turns into a plus. We'll drag that open, and then we will uh, change this little button right here to the shader editor. Sweet. I'm going to hit Shift A, and we're going to search for, uh, in, uh, under the mesh category, we're going to go to landscape. Now you can see it puts this little tiny landscape down here at the, at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to close this. Uh, I'm gonna cl I'm gonna close this just a little bit right now. We can make that bigger by uh, bumping up the mesh size to 10, which is what I did earlier. So 10 and 10. There we go. Now it's bigger, um, but it's not very nice looking because it's super low quality. You see. Um, so what we can do is we can let me go to solid viewport shading for this. Uh, we're gonna fix this. We can bump the subdivisions up to like 512 by 512. It makes it super much more high resolution, but it's gonna lag your computer like crazy. And if your computer can't handle it, then it's just not gonna be able to. So it looks really good, but it's really like oof. It, it's really bad. I mean, my computer's struggling, and my computer's definitely not a potato. So I'm actually gonna bump this down just for today's tutorial. I'm gonna go 256, 256. Um, and now this is super small still. So what I'm gonna do to fix that is I'm gonna go down here to height and bump the height up to three. I believe I had. Uh, yes, it was three, but you can see it's cut off and I don't want a super flat plateau that looks cool But not for what I'm doing. So I'm going to change the uh, Maximum distance from one to three and now you can see that we have full mountain peaks, which is really nice um, But what I want to do is this is kind of tall and I don't really want that right now So I'm actually going to change the height to two I'm going to bump on the material that I created earlier, which is this bad boy I think it looks really cool and there it is right there Really cool looking material that we have, which is just super cool. Um, really enjoy this. By the way, I also have uh, ambient occlusion on. So let me just real quick touch on that. So if you go to ambient, if you go to the render properties tab, you can go check on ambient occlusion. And this by default will be on 0.2. Change that to 10, and you're all set to go. A lot more uh, realism with that ambient occlusion on there. Super cool. Now. This material took me a little bit of time here, you can see. So what I did pretty much was, it's actually pretty simple, it's much more simple than you think it is. This is all I did. Uh, essentially, uh, it's it's basically these two nodes that's doing the bulk of the work. Because if, if we didn't have those, it would literally look like uh, this. So, um, so yeah, that's just, yeah, yeah. Plug up that principal BSDF shader, it will look like this close to that anyway like like this um and uh, we don't want that we don't want a shiny mountain because who wants shiny mountains nobody likes shiny mountains guys nobody likes shiny mountains we're gonna turn specular all the way down and roughness all the way up because we don't want shiny mountains and we're going to go ahead and just turn everything on soft we don't really need anything other than of course alpha and roughness um the color we're gonna leave that exactly the same then i'm gonna grab a shift a color ramp right there. I'm going to grab that and then plop it down here. Um, and what I'm going to do is by default, it will look like um, this. It'll just have black and white as the two colors look like that. Uh, but what I did was I added a few more colors. So I just clicked one of these points, added a brownish color, something like that, you know, hit this little plus button, added another color, dragged it about right there another brown color what do you know check it out and i did that over and over again until i have all these colors we're going to plug up the color of the color ramp into the principal bsdf shader in the, in the only other thing i did here was i turned this from linear to cardinal because linear looks like this you can even see it on the colors here let's take a look at this area right here linear to cardinal i think that looks much more mountain e so i just I, I turned it to cardinal i don't ever use cardinal this is the first time literally by the way it just usually doesn't look good but for mountains and mountains it looked fantastic so the last two things I did was I added in first, I actually added in the texture coordinate. So add in the texture coordinate, shift A, then we just search for a texture, boom, plop that down and plug the object into the color ramp there. And now you can see what this is going to do is it's going to do something like this. And this looks like trash because as you can see, it's all off center. It's rotated improperly. 
Um, it's it just looks bad. This is not what I this is not what I want. This is like a sideways mountain, guys. I don't know what I don't know what's going on here. This is like like half snow, half not snow. I don't know, but it doesn't look good. So what I did to fix that was I grabbed a mapping node, which is a Shift A search mapping, and we just go ahead and just grab that guy, plop him in between the texture coordinate and the color ramp. Boom, skiggity skick skick. And then we got uh, some mapping this. Now you can see it didn't do anything. That's because we got to rotate this, which is one of the most tedious things on the face of the planet, guys. I hate doing this. I hate this node with a passion because it doesn't rotate properly. But I finally got it by dragging around the X, Y, and Z uh, coordinates. And uh, I ended up with uh, these values up here. So let me just get rid of that piece of trash and then just put this one down here. So I ended up with, um, uh, real quick. Uh, the X on point one does that even do anything? No, it does. The X on point one, I can actually pull that down more, most likely. I can pull that down more. If you want it down more, you can do that. So I'm gonna actually put it down a little bit more myself. Uh, so I ended up on 1.1 for the X. I want more snow up there. Um, we got uh, 0.8 for the Y location, uh, negative 2.8 for the Z location, as you can see, uh, negative 31.4 for the X, 48 for the Y, 6.8 for the Z. And then for the scale, uh, I did change this a little bit. Like, like look at this. Like, it, this is literally rotating it, but it says it's scale. I just, guys, I can't because it's stretching it. It's stretching it, but I just, I, I, I hate this note so much. So that's on point two, and then the X and the Z are on one. So this should be the same for you. The mapping node should work exactly the same for your uh, landscape, but if it doesn't, don't worry about it. Just fiddle with it until you get it. Um, it really just, I don't like this node at all. I just really think that it could work better than what it does. Um, so yeah, I just, I, I hate, I hate it so much, but we got it going. We got it going on. Yeah, we got it going on. Um, so, uh, that's it. That's literally it for that material. So we did the landscape. We did the material. It looks fantastic. I really like the way this, uh, this looks. It has a very nice feel to it. It's very clean. Um, and very, very smooth. I really enjoy that. Now you can make this a little bit more realistic just real quick by adding in a noise texture. So shift a noise texture, boom, splicky splack splack, and then put the color into the displacement here. Um, and what I can do is when that loads, when that when that finally loads, there we go. What, you, what I can do here is turn this back off of uh, shade smooth and turn it to shade flat. Um, and then we can just turn the scale. You know, we'll do instead of doing the, dis the displacement, we'll do it on the color. So I'm going to grab a noise texture really quickly. And then we'll just plug this into I'll grab a mix shift a mix shader. And we'll plop that right. No, not there. No, after it. Thank you. After it. Thank you. We'll grab that. And then we'll duplicate our principal BSDF shader shift D to duplicate, by the way, shift D. And then we'll hook that up into the second shader output here. And then I'll grab my noise texture, plug the color into the base color. And now, and and now put that back on shade smooth. And now you can see we have this little rainbow thing, which is not what I want. So we can fix that real quick by actually let me uh, duplicating this uh, this color ramp, and then putting that in between them. There we go. And and there we go. So now we got some nice looking noise, but there's too much white going on. So I'm gonna get rid of those two uh, two white colors, and also might as well get rid of that gray one as well. And I'll just move these around a little bit. Now we need more ups and downs. Because uh, the colors aren't varying enough. So I'm going to hit plus, add a new color. And then we'll make like a little bit of a lighter one, maybe. A little tannish. Like that, maybe. And then hit plus again, add another one. Maybe we'll go with like a darker color this time. Because it needs to be dark. Maybe even black. We'll just do solid black. Why not? Cool. Now, this, is this noise is too big. So I'm going to bump the scale up. So you can see we got some more noise. Um, and I want to turn the detail all the way up to 16, and I think that's a little bit too much noise, uh, so we'll do maybe do 10, maybe 10, yeah, and then I'll turn the factor so it favors more of the smooth side, and then I'll just maybe turn, scale up a little bit more, something like that, and turn the factor of the mix shader down a little bit, yeah. Alright, cool. I enjoy this really, really nice, simple, cute, little stylistic uh, mountain we got here. Really enjoy it. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I will see you in the next one, but until then, bye-bye.